Alright guys, this is going to be a tutorial on the solar rail complex. The solar rail complex are a sort of super game inside the game. It's it's overarching. Um, it's when these um, dark sectors go into conflict like this. And um, so a clan or alliance holds it. And in this case it's Orion. They hold, uh, they hold it. And they can set their taxes. The um, the taxes are how much percentage of the resources or the credits that that clan gets from every person that runs it. You can set the the clan taxes and uh, resource tribute are changed for whoever's in a clan and whoever's not in a clan. So a clan can set high taxes for its members or low taxes for its members, but have opposite for the uh, the other group. Um, each of them have their own credits that they uh, give out, plus the resource boosts and XP boosts for different um, weapons and uh, things. When it's under conflict, it looks like this. Um, it is ICE is defending against V right now. Um, and it will look like this. They have The attackers have 12 hours to completely reduce this um, damage completely reduce this percentages all the way to zero to take the rail. Um, they can put up battle pay and uh, then there's it'll be this much per run and this will be how much money they have till it runs out. Um, that's all pretty simple. When you're in a clan or an alliance so that is, then you can only support your side. You can't support the opposing team to host it like if you're defending or something like that. Um, also the if you win as a defender, it does not knock off time um, from this side. There, it's this amount of time to knock down that much runs. Each run does a little bit of a percentage. It's about 20, roughly 20 runs per percentage. Um, if you are attacking or defending, and you lose, and there's a battle pay, you get half of the battle pay. If you win, you get the whole battle pay. If you lose, you get half the battle pay. As long as there's still reserve money. Um, that is about it for this little bit. Um, as for the types of rails, what it looks like in game, I will show you that in a second. So before you go into one of these conflicts, you should know how it works. You should know that when you enter a conflict you're going to be unranked you, um, both sides start unranked so everything on you, that's your warframe, weapons, melee, everything is on you you will not have a companion of either type um, and I have a pvp loadout set up so this is my loadout I run these, I have a carrier on, it just it disables it when you put it on you will not be able to use any consumables as either so you can't do any scanning or um, the energy pads or anything like that you won't be able to use. Um, so when you get in you're unranked and you're you don't have any mods but when you kill something you get your XP like usual and you rank up your guns throughout the level. It ranks up extremely fast compared to regular and you will get um, your mods in a certain order you'll notice. Um, you'll get certain mods at certain times you won't always get like the first mod from your Warframe and the first mod from your gun and the first mod for your secondary and you won't get it all at once you'll get one mod one level another mod another level sometimes you'll get two mods three mods depending on how much XP you got but it goes in a certain order for everything it starts at the top left corner and works its way across and then along the bottom row as well so the first Warframe uh, mod that you're going to get is going to be this slot right here, whatever you have here. It doesn't necessarily have to be an ability, but you need that's going to be your first one. So, usually, because it takes so long, you get this one, and it goes across, and, and you reach about here, and that's around 17, level 17 or so. Um, and this one you can get a second ability if you want, but usually you pick one ability and you stick with it for the most part throughout the conflict because you don't have energy readily available. Also, your aura does not seem to work as to what like the boost it gives. So if you have energy siphon or rejuvenation in this case, you don't regen three health per tick. 
or whatever it is. Um, it may do it at an extremely slow rate, but I haven't noticed it multiple times that I've run it. Um, it doesn't give you, it just gives you the more points. Um, you also, throughout the, the mission, it will, it, you get this pack, you get this at, I don't know what rank exactly, but when you get it, it'll be rank one, and it ranks itself up multiple times throughout the match. Um, so to build this, you, you get your first ability, and then you want to probably do something to enhance it. Um, I went with duration on the snow globe, and then strength, and this should be here. And um, I put vigor on. I, I highly recommend vigor in most PvP builds because it gives you shields and health, and it gives you a decent amount straight away. So you can get instantly like get this around level seven or five, five or seven. And um, you can you suddenly have more health and shields um, because if you just go with vitality, you still have tiny amounts of shields because you're just going with base stats um, when you come in. As for your primary, it's the same deal. You're going to get your you're going to start up here and work your way across. So if you have it formed the wrong way, where you have your serration down here or something like that, then you're going to have to switch your formas. Um, the polarities again don't necessarily matter the drain doesn't seem to matter a whole lot um, so if you stack split chamber before infected clip or infected clip before split chamber then it doesn't really matter I have to go this route because I have zero capacity um, you should take most just level 3 stuff into your conflict you don't get any XP out of it so um, my secondary, I use the Marlock. Um, I go straight damage first, and then I add on my uh, elements. Some people will go elements first. If it has a high status chance, they can go elements. Um, you're going to be using your secondary a lot, because whenever you go down, you get your secondary out. You're going to be going down fairly regularly, um, unless you're extremely good or play extremely cautiously. Um, your melee weapon, you usually want to pick something very fast and that has decent um, base stats. So, let's see, do I not? I use just the regular, my regular build for it. Um, I do my pressure point and jagged edge just to get base damage, and then I put on fury because if you get in a melee battle with each other, then it seems to like come down to attack speed. Um, there's different suggested weapons for each of these different builds. The biggest difference comes with which Warframe do you select. Um, I run Frost Prime, Rhino, uh, Vauban, and, and Zephyr, depending on the situations. Um, other people that I know, Ash is very good um, Warframe because of Bladestorm, Mag is very good because of Pull, Loki is very good because of Invisibility, and Switch Teleport can be very uh, useful early game. Um, each, each Warframe has its own special quirks in PvP, and you just have to know that this is the order that you get your mods, and you may want to put on your efficiency early on, like with Bladestorm, if you get Bladestorm then you want your efficiency, and then you'll be able to spam it fairly quickly. Um, when you first enter a level, you'll start out here and you'll work your way through the level. You have to hit both the consoles in this first room. Um, there'll be turrets and enemies to destroy to level up your gear and gain your mods. Uh, when you have to, the main objective as an attacker is to get all the way to the core and destroy the core. While if you look up in the top left, there is 17 out of 20 reinforcements. You only have 20 reinforcements every run through that you have. Um, you can't gain them back, and that's why reviving people, like I just did, is important. You may not always be able to revive your teammates, though, because they might be in a bad position or exposed, and you just can't do it. Um, you yourself would die in that place. Um, when I entered this level, I came in at level 9, um, and that is because you can, when you enter an in-progress match, you enter at the lowest player's level. 
this lets you join the matches even if you aren't necessarily the host or it's in progress. Um, so when you hit a console, you stand there for a few seconds, you're completely exposed. So turrets can shoot you, uh, players can shoot you, you can be blade stormed as well, you can take CC. Um, I don't think it takes any longer if you're being slowed though. So if you can get in and then you get slowed during the process, I don't think it takes any longer. You can also, if you go down, then you can just attack the person who's going to deactivate it. They don't try to deactivate it right now because I'm not playing against real players. Um, but the defenders can run up to it, press X, and they can deactivate it. So you may have to hit A or B multiple times. Once you hit both of them, the barriers will go down and you can continue forward. Once the barriers are down, you can move forward through these hallways. And uh, the next room is not always the same. In this case, I believe upcoming is the two consoles. Yes, it is. Um, this one, you have to hit, again, two consoles for the barrier to go down to move forward. And there's turrets and stuff usually in the middle. These are some fairly well-known turret placements. Um, you can take them down. There, you can count on them being there most of the time. Um, but you hit both consoles. You move forward. Sometimes the consoles are up the stairs up above. And then you just move forward to the final room, which is always the same. When you move forward, this will be your spawn room uh, for the final room, and you have to hit, again, two consoles. This will always be the same, but when you hit both consoles, you do not move forward. It raises the shield um, some in the middle, um, and then you shoot the core until the core has 0% integrity. You can see that in the top left. Um, all the while, you need to be doing the, all three rooms without taking your reinforcements down. Um, I hit A here. And uh, once B is hit, there, there's no time limit on like how long you have to hit in between them. They, they, you just have to hit them both once, um, and then you shoot the core, like so. The core has a lot of health. You may have to open and close it multiple times, but uh, it can be done in, within one open and close if you have the right gear slash warframes. Um, all the while, there will be enemies coming out of the other end of the place, as well as turrets shooting and people dying. Alright, so, when you want to donate to a solar rail or start a solar, solar rail construction, then you need to go to the dojo. You click through here, you go to your dojo, like usual. And in our case, once we load through, uh, you go to the solar rail room. Um, it can be at any place in your dojo, but ours is right over here. It looks like these rooms that we're going towards on the map. Um, it looks like this when you're inside of it. And so to build a solar rail, you come over here. And you have to research it first. You have to unlock the research, you build the research, you research it. I'm not sure how long that takes because we have it done. And uh, then to build your solar rails, you uh, come over here. And this is where you would contribute to an actual rail construction like this. There we only need 12,000 plastics left. Um, these, this, is the, this is not the cost of the actual rail itself. You need, um, I believe it was 25,000 Rubido and... Another 25 control modules, I believe, as well. This is also where you contribute and um, research and build um, the, the Spectre armies. So you do that. You uh, That's how you contribute there. If you're doing alliance rails, this is where you do the alliance rails. There we go. That's the cost of the rails in general. 500,000 credits, 15,000 rubo, my bad, and 25 control modules. Um, all the costs are the same for rail versus alliance. So you can use that to guesstimate how much stuff costs. When you have your rail completed and you need to put down a schema, that is like how the rooms are laid out and where the turrets are, you come here. You, this has to do with all the solar rail defenses, so you come in here and you would click on to make a new one if you don't have any yet. You would start a new rail one. This is your clan one. This is your alliance one. Um, they both start out the same, but we go into this one and this takes you from the dojo basically into the map itself. When you're in the map, you uh, go and 
place the turrets. If the turrets are already placed, then you uh, go up to the turrets and you build. You go escape, decorations, edit decorations, and then that allows you to click on it. They glow kind of red if they're done. If they're glowing blue, that means they are in progress. They're being built. All the materials that they need are contributed and they are building during the process they take about a day to build. So we can contribute things here. Um, I'll, I'll contribute the... You can punch in numbers or you can just uh, plus them up. So um, I'm going to contribute these just as a uh, demonstration. But that's how you contribute to the things. You do have to, every time you go and you contribute to this one, then you have to go and you have to redo the decorations at decorations every single time. But um, they can get done pretty quick. The turrets aren't that expensive. But then there's the rooms. The rooms, you have to do the same thing. You come over here. And this one is 44% completed. And uh, we just need more credits and, or more orcan cells and stuff like that. And it's basically the same process. You do it. It takes about a day to build. And then you can go. You can continue on in the map. Place your turrets. Build your turrets. Same with the last room. Um, that is how you contribute to the solar rails and the schemas for those solar rails. Um, this concludes the tutorial on solar rails and how to contribute them. So uh, if you have any more questions, uh, please leave a question in the comments or uh, contact me personally if you know that know me in-game. And uh, I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.